we've been collecting organisms for hundreds of years. The thing that separates what we do now from the way we did it in the 1700s is the digital uh, tools that we have to use that are only recently available. Now we take digital images. Instead of taking one camera that you drag along with glass negatives, you take a thousand pictures a day and you take them from every angle and you can document every single thing that you do, which was never possible you know, a few years ago. And then when you come back from the field, you have the ability to put these on a computer and to study them and to use them and to link them with their georeference and put them up on Google Earth and do a, a, an amazing amount of work that we were never able to do before. One of the things that's really changed the way we do our science is georeferencing. Now we can get within a few meters of where we really are when we collect a plant or an animal. And this allows us to do modeling that we could never do before. If you can georeference the specimens you have, put a latitude and longitude on everything you have from that area, and you plot that out on a map, then you can see where you've been and where you haven't been. And you can plan where you want to go. Because you don't just want the maximum number of species. So you're looking for areas that have high numbers, yes, or lots of endemics, yes, but also a good representation of groups. One of the most interesting things about the Guyana Shield is the presence of tabletop mountains called Tapui. And I think, um, as a scientist, one of the most exciting things I've ever done is to fly around in a helicopter around the islands in the sky, these Tapuis, to be able to see these flat top mountains that are sprinkled with species that are found nowhere else in the world, and to be able to study the diversity of ecosystems as you climb from the forest floor to the tops of these mountains. Inherent, I think, in all humans is this oneness with the environment, this ability to connect with nature, whether it's a walk in the park or a trip down the Grand Canyon. The spectacular nature of what surrounds us and the plants and animals that cover the surface of the world are part of who we are. They're part of how we evolve, they're part of how we exist. And knowing about that allows us to try and conserve it. Because if we don't know what we've got, if we don't understand how the biodiversity fits together, we're never going to be able to figure out a way to live on this planet without destroying it.